Sticky headers in Framer are really easy to do, but I don't blame you if you don't know how. It took me a while to find the best way to do it. Today, I'm gonna share two ways. The first way is really common, but it has its drawbacks. It's okay for most scenarios, but the second way is my favorite. It's versatile and you can get really advanced with it. Now, I used to review the templates for the Framer Template Marketplace, and it was my job to peek into around 50 to even sometimes around 80 websites a day to make sure that they all were up to a certain build standard. So I've seen a lot of the common mistakes that you can make in Framer when it comes to building navs. So please, let me make sure that you don't make those same mistakes and let me show you two of the easiest and best ways to build a sticky header in Framer. So the first method uses fixed positioning. To start off, we're gonna need a nav bar. Now, you can build one yourself, but I'm gonna grab one from Blocks, which is a UI kit that gives us access to hundreds of pre-built elements. There's a link below the video if you wanna grab it for yourself. So now that we've got our nav bar, I'm gonna change the positioning from relative to fixed. If this is grayed out for you, you need to make sure it's not inside another layer. This only works if it's a direct child of the breakpoint. Now you probably noticed that when I switched it from relative to fixed, the whole page jumped up. So when we switched the nav bar to fixed, the hero section went, oh, there's an empty space there. We're set to relative. Let's fill that space. The best way to fix this is to find out what the height of the nav bar is and then add that onto the top padding of the hero. So by switching the nav's height to fixed, it shows us that it's 88 pixels tall. Let's command Z that to set it back to fit and then add 88 to the top padding of the hero section, which will make it 188. Remember to repeat this step for all the other breakpoints to keep your site responsive. Bonus tip, instead of figuring out what 80 plus 88 is in your head, just type out the equation into the text box. Now, I like to live by the motto of why do maths if calculator? Enjoy the tip. The last step for this method is to pin the sides of the nav to the side of your screen. This is gonna make sure the width of the nav adapts to the width of your screen. So now if you hit preview, it should look like this. If it does, well done. If it doesn't, that's fine. Go back and watch it again from the beginning. And if it still doesn't after that, try leaving a comment so I or someone else in the comments can help you out. Now, anytime you use fixed positioning, you have to remember that whatever frame you fix on the screen stays exactly in that spot, which also makes it perfect for floating navs. If you give some space to the left, right, and top pins, and it stays there no matter what, which is exactly what we want, right? Well, not quite. I'll show you why. So if I go to view this in my browser, it works great scrolling down. But then I scroll up and, whoa, see that? That's not ideal. This is happening because you're scrolling past the page, which is finished now, but the nav bar is still fixed to the top of the screen. So it's just staying there. And that's fine, but it can look a little bit weird. Now, if this was a huge deal, if this was a deal breaker, and if you did this and it didn't pass the test to get through to the frame of template marketplace, I wouldn't share it with you. But it's really not that big of a deal. But there is a better way. Now this next way uses sticky positioning. This way comes with a lot of really useful benefits. My favorite one being that it will only stick to the top of the screen when we tell it to, which makes it perfect for when we wanna put a banner above it. It will even react to changes in our page height. So when we scroll down, it only sticks to the top of the page when we scroll past the banner. But watch what happens when I scroll back up and dismiss the banner. See that? Now this wouldn't be possible with fixed positioning. So we're gonna start again with all of our elements set to relative positioning, except this time we have a banner, which in case you were wondering is also available in blocks. Now this time around, we're gonna set the positioning of the nav to sticky instead of fixed. But if we try to preview it now, it's not gonna work. But why is it not working? I mean, we set it to sticky, so what, why is it not sticking? Now, I'm actually not sure exactly why, but sticky only works if all the parent layers have overflow set to visible. The only parent layer of this nav is the breakpoint, so let's set the overflow from hidden to visible. Now you can preview the page and admire the sticky nav that you just built. Great job. Now guys, I really encourage you to keep experimenting with sticky positioning. You can get some really cool use cases out of it. I saw a really cool one recently by Nate Watkin where the CTA transforms into a floating nav when it reaches the top of the screen. Now, I've never seen that before, super unique. 
love to see stuff like that. Now guys, I hope you learned something. If you end up building something really cool from this tutorial, please share it with me. Uh, tag me on Twitter at Suolam, I'd love to see it. And please drop a comment, let me know what you wanna learn next or see next. I'll keep my eyes on the comments.